All right, getting started with our demos today. We have some ethyl alcohol uh, readily igniting in the presence of oxygen. So our ethyl alcohol is C2H5OH, and it is, you know, going right there. Ignition happened right before I uh, it started the video, and you know, it's kind of impressive that I can light our lab tables on fire and they don't burn. Um, there's just no hydrocarbons there, the stuff that we need for this reaction to happen in that table, so it cannot, will not ever burn. So kind of cool there, but I want to do the exact same thing with a little bit more, mm, a little bit more of a bang to get us started off with. So what I've actually done already is pour a little bit of that same ethyl alcohol that I had on the desk into this bottle. And I shook the bottle up, poured the extra out, and now I have the gas form of our alcohol still in the bottle with a little bit of that oxygen from the air. So it's ready to ignite again. And what I'm gonna do, I have this uh, grill lighter connected here. You might recognize this button. Um, and this is what we call a piezo igniter. There's no battery in here. There's no source of electricity except for a crystal. And when the hammer in this hits the crystal, it causes a little bit of spark. The wires in this are just connected to two little prongs at the end that I've put inside my bottle. So I am going to be able to cause this ignition to happen in an enclosed space, which is going to mean that it is going to have some you know, slightly different effects on this reaction. We're gonna go ahead and do this in three, two, one. Okie dokie then. So, exact same thing that happened on the bench, but by putting it in that confined space, we had more of an explosion than just kind of normal burning. And that's the only difference between the two, is whether you restrict that expansion of gases and that heat that's all produced by that ignition um, into a small space, then it's gonna give more of a bang when it does explode and escape from that confined space. Now. I was positive that I was safe and I wasn't gonna be blown up by any kind of bomb. This was just a controlled explosion because I knew that that rubber stopper was kind of my point of failure. It was gonna come shooting out and across the room before this bottle blew open and shards started flying everywhere. So I was able to have a controlled safe explosion right here in front of me with no concerns um, because of the way that I designed this. So. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and let's answer the questions we need to and move on to that next demo. All right, so let's start putting this chemical equation together. First of all, of course, we have ethanol, um, because that's the fuel we have chosen to ignite here. And whether it was on the lab table or in the bottle, we needed to have some oxygen mixed in there in order to get this going. And when the reaction happened, we produced a lot of hot gases, mostly in the form of CO2, but also some of that uh, was H2O, water vapor, that was formed. And there was also some liquid water vapor formed in both situations. Um, if we get a chance to do this in class, uh, then you will observe some water vapor left behind on the lab table in that uh, kind of water ring there that's not just from the alcohol that was poured on the table. There is some actual liquid left behind as well as in the bottle after um, it is uh, uh, ignited. Uh, there will be some liquid left behind even when I do pour out all of the liquid before the ignition. So. That is our chemical equation. Now you need to work on balancing it before you go on to the next demo.